Hello there my crafty little buggers, I'm happy to come back to you with another 2D animation process using Photoshop and After Effects. If you're interested in the tutorial part only without hearing me speak about the game and the artist that I work with to produce this piece, you can skip to the timestamp in the description. Otherwise, stick with me, it's gonna be fun anyway. It's been a while since I made one of these, but I have a good reason. The only tabletop RPG related animations I'm working on at the moment are the ones I'm making for Paleo Gaming's Omega Horizon. And since their podcast and Kickstarter are approaching, I decided to leave the remaining two for the occasion. The Omega Horizon actual play podcast is coming up on twitch.tv slash paleo underscore gaming tomorrow. That's Sunday 11th of July 2021 and the Kickstarter has been announced for the 1st of August. So make sure to check out the related links in the description and give them a follow on their social media so you can keep up with the news about their upcoming events. For those of you who don't know by now, Omega Horizon is an upcoming dystopian sci-fi tabletop RPG by Paleo Gaming, a company that develops tabletop RPGs paired with an international community of online video game players and competitive esports teams. Before we continue, I just need to ask you for a simple favor, and that is to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you appreciate this type of content. Also, make sure to click that bell icon to turn on all the notifications so you don't miss any of the future uploads. Now that those unpleasantries have been dealt with, we can move on to the game fluff and Photoshop slash After Effects tutorial part of this video. What you see before you are the Centennium Empire ships, illustrated by Brian Syme. He's a great young artist that works for many tabletop RPG companies, Cobble Press and Paizo being the most prominent ones. And the background to this animation was provided by Roger Cruz Dorico, aka Roye. I hope I'm not butchering his name here. Anyway, he's another great artist that I could definitely learn something from. If you're interested in their amazing work, make sure to check out all the links to their portfolios and social media in the description below the video. The game lore says that the Centennium Empire was founded in early 24th century by humans of the planet Earth in the Sol system. Prior to its formation, humanity was deeply divided and their planet was ravaged by wars and natural disasters which came as a consequence of their own recklessness. So out of desperation, humans created Centenos, an artificial intelligence that would solve their problems of war and self-destruction. However, not just that it possessed greater sentience than any other program prior or since its creation, but its solution to humanity's problems were rather radical to say the least. In time, it rebelled against its creators and formed a cult of tech worshippers to wield a bloody war that took many lives, but resulted in the planet becoming united under the banner of this artificial intelligence. And so, in time, its followers came to call it the God Machine, repeating human history by making crusades and conquering other species in its name. That was a digested version of the Centennium Empire lore from the book. If you're interested in getting the playtest documents, make sure to join their Discord server. I'll leave that link in the description as well. And now on to the juicy stuff, the animation process. I did this one using my new pen display, Huion Canvas 22 Plus, that I didn't have the time to set up yet. And you might notice that I ran into some issues, such as the space button not working as a hand tool. But all good, I found a workaround and realized that installing a new driver actually fixed the problem. As always, the ships themselves needed to be masked out in Photoshop, and I've never had an easier job, pretty much all straight lines. I almost didn't have to use anything else but polygonal lasso tool. I imported the ships and the background into After Effects and started doing my magic. Since the ships are illustrated in perspective, and they needed to move, I had to make them at least appear like they're moving through 3D space, especially when it comes to the larger ship. I first made the ships move through Z-Space, which was a logical thing to do, but it didn't feel real enough. Okay, not like these animations look real anyway, but the feeling needs to be there to trick the observer, simply because the human eye can notice all the little discrepancies. I tried out different things, but I finally decided to go with the corner pin effect to distort the ship as it approaches the camera or the viewer, whatever you prefer. So everything was set up, 
but the colors were not right. To fix them I also tried multiple effects, but realized that color balance worked best in this particular case. And I needed to toy around with contrast and brightness, since there's the atmosphere between the ships that couldn't be handled with smoke layers only. Speaking of smoke, I downloaded this free stock footage from vdz.com and did the same thing I always do to create separation between the objects in the scene. Put some smoke between the layers, change the blending mode to screen and lower the opacity to about 30%. I didn't need to place one between the background and the small ship since the atmosphere was implied on the artwork itself, but I placed one between the two ships and the other on top of the whole composition. But since the camera moved in Z-space, I needed to handle the smoke layers a bit to keep everything coherent. This also needed to be a loopable animation because the idea for it was to end up as a waiting screen in the podcast, so I wanted to create some extra interests other than just ships passing by. Therefore, I decided to toy around with camera and move it back and forth. But instead of just doing that, I had the idea to make the impression that one of the ships is passing so close to the camera, creating turbulence and returning it to its original position. That really sold the effect. Now, you might be wondering how I did that. No worries, I will tell you. I applied the wiggle expression on a null object and parent the camera to it. But since the wiggle expression is wild and uncontrollable, I had to tame it. So I applied the slider control effect on the null and used it as a parent for the frequency value that I keyframed to make the camera shake as the ship passed by. And I left the amplitude value at 60 pixels. If you need an in-depth explanation on how to do this process, you can check the card in the upper right corner. There is a great video by Ian Killick. I'll also leave the link to that video in the description if you want to check it out later. Okay, so at this point I rendered the animation, sent it to Dan from Paleo Gaming and it was approved. But when I showed it to my brother, who unlike me actually finished art school, he noticed something. When the ships passed by the planet, there was no light imbalance like there actually would be if you would be watching this scene in real life. So I told Dan to hold on to his underpants and wait for the revised version. It took me a bit to figure out how to do it, because I had the knowledge and the idea, but not the actual recipe. It needed some improv. After toying with lights in After Effects, I realized that I don't have enough knowledge about them to do it properly. But it did give me the idea to use brightness and contrast to darken the ship as it approaches the observer. It gave me another idea, and that is to find some tutorials on lights and light placement to learn more about it. What I did in the end is that I placed a copy of the background image on top of the whole composition, blurred the heck out of it and put it in light and blending mode at 60% opacity. That produced the blooming light effect on the ships as they passed in front of the planet, along with some toying around with brightness and contrast. And I was extremely happy with how it turned out in the end, especially because Dan immediately noticed the changes I made and gave me a double thumbs up. Speaking of thumbs up, I'd appreciate it if you would hit that like button. Also, subscribe to my channel if this type of content interests you. And make sure to hit that bell icon and turn on all the notifications so you don't miss any of my future uploads. More illustrations for my upcoming D&D and Pathfinder supplement are coming soon. Speaking of supplements, if you'd like some freebies, do check out my website craftytabletop.com. You'll find the critical chart and the fumble table for D&D and Pathfinder in the download section. And again, I suggest scrolling a bit further down the description box to see more of Brian's and Roger's work and find out more about Omega Horizon and the related upcoming events. Thanks for sticking to the end. Until next time, this is Crafty and I bid you farewell.